from Trimble Construction, you're listening to the Connected Construction Show, where we connect you to the contractors, owners, designers, engineers, and construction professionals who are finding better ways to work. And now, here's your host, Matt Sprague. Hello and welcome back, everybody, to the Connected Construction Show. I'm your host, as always, Matt Sprague. We are joined this week by Dan Garcia from CW Matthews. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Matt. I'm I'm excited to be on. Awesome. Um, I know we we've we've had some technical difficulties, but we've got uh, we've worked through it here. Um, uh, I, I love that part of of, of podcast life. You never know what's going to be thrown at you. Um, so it's just so that, that everybody knows there was a lot of hard work on Dan's part in order to, to, to join us today. Uh, when, uh, when, when something has an opportunity to go wrong, it does. And today it did, but yeah. glad to be with you. Awesome. So, um, we'll get going right away. Um, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, and how you ended up so, uh, at CW Matthew. So like where, how you got to where you are today, uh, in the industry, what was your, what was your journey? Well, Thanks, Matt. I, again, glad to be with you. So, yeah, um, you know, I was I was born in in Venezuela, in, in Caracas, Venezuela, and uh, lived there all the way through uh, my high school years. Uh, came to the U.S. and uh, studied at the Citadel uh, Civil Engineering. And and once I finished my degree, um, I knew that uh, construction was the path I wanted uh, to take. Not so much in the engineering route, but more on the uh, on the construction, my dad had a uh, small construction company in Venezuela. And, uh, you know, I, I had this amazing opportunity out of school to join a, a very large construction company, uh, Colas, a uh, French-owned company. And I was with them for 17 years. I, I moved around a little bit with them. And then in 2013, I got the opportunity to to join C.W. Matthews. So I've now been here uh, for 10 years uh, I started, uh, you know, in the estimating side and, and enjoyed that very much. But uh, my love has always been the operation side, uh, really the connection to the people that work this industry. Uh, so quickly moved into more of an operations role and kind of just, you know, advance, uh, you know, through opportunities, through acquisitions, through getting um, involved in different types of projects and uh, again but my, my love for the for the work uh love the project side but definitely uh the people in the industry is what uh where my passion and motivation is is based so um so yeah I had uh you know uh again when i came to matthews i, I came as a chief operating officer and then um in 2015 i i, I got the great opportunity very blessed to now lead as president of the company that's awesome. I, lo- I love hearing. Um, and, and from our pre-show meetings, I didn't realize that you were from Venezuela. So um, how, how did you end up in from Caracas and now in Georgia? So what, yeah. what was that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, that, so that you know, love? <laughs> yes. yes so, uh, not, so a little bit of that. But uh, so uh, my, my brother had also uh, attended the Citadel and my, my mom's American. My dad was born in Spain and that's he moved at an early age to Venezuela. But uh, yes, yeah, so I uh, had the opportunity. Mom had a c- cousin that taught at the Citadel and that kind of was our connection there. But like I said, my brother attended and uh, and then I kind of followed in his footsteps. Uh, but after getting out of school, um, I said I worked in Maryland and Pennsylvania. And in, in 1998, the company I was working for uh, through acquisitions um, bought some uh, firms in South Carolina and in Georgia. And, and I was uh, at that time dating my now wife. So I was trying to get back south. And uh, sure enough, I got the opportunity to do that. We got married in South Carolina and uh Five kids later and several moves later, uh, you know, I ended up in Georgia in 2002. So it's hard to believe I've been in Georgia for for now 21 years in, in the Atlanta area for 10 years. So, uh, uh, you know, great place to live. Uh, it's warm year round. We can work year round. So, uh, so you know, it, it's it's a great place to live. And, and again, 
companies. I've been blessed with the the two firms that I've worked for. One again, very large uh, international business, and then at Matthews, we're the largest construction in the heavy civil side in the state of Georgia, with a uh, little over fifteen hundred employees. So both you know large companies, but one uh, corporation, and in this case, a family owned business. Gotcha. So in um rewinding a little bit before you said like you really enjoy the people side of it and um we we at the connected construction show we've had a a handful of episodes that have talked around um you know uh, the the problem of the labor shortage or or the cliff or the impending cliff that 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 is on its way um but it doesn't mean that's like you know so it it gets brought up because it's so important and there are so many different ways in which it's being addressed. So um, we had an opportunity to chat earlier and, and you know, we, we hear the word uh, innovative applied to, to technology. Um, but what does innovative mean to you and, and, and to CW Matthews? Sure. So, you know, obviously on the technology front and equipment and asphalt plants and all those things, technology plays a a huge role, but in, in innovative for us really has been surrounded around the people problem, if you want to call it that. I see it more as a people opportunity. We, um, you like know, that. the talk is, uh, you know, that this industry is short on help and, and without a doubt, it, it, it's a challenging area for, for anybody in the, in the construction industry. But we've really focused um, in, in this area in and feel like we, we've accomplished uh, some great things over the last few years. You know, our focus turned uh, years ago, uh, approximately three or four years. You know, we kept looking ourselves in the mirror and really just having these discussions around, um, you know, the boardroom and that sort of thing about uh, these people problems, people problems. And we're like, you know, everybody's talking about it, but we, we've got to actually do something about it. So our focus has been... Um, mainly related, not exclusively, but mainly at the uh, at at the beginning, at the elementary, middle school, and high school levels. So that kind of sounds a little bit crazy uh, because obviously, you know, you think about elementary and middle school. There's no quick returns, but uh, you know, we kind of thought, hey, if we start planting uh, those seeds early on, then hopefully we can get everybody to. Uh, start understanding the narrative that this is a great industry to work in. And uh, so we, we focus there, definitely heavily focus at the high school level. So we have two full-time uh, employees that, that uh, one, uh, Jeremy Whitaker, he was a teacher at a local high school. We made the connection with him. He, he was in the, uh, teaching construction and uh, just so what he was uh, starting at that school, what he was able to accomplish. And uh, I could go on and on about what he was doing there, but we made a connection with him. And soon after that, he approached us and said he was ready for a change. So we brought him full time and basically have just make, made connections at different high schools throughout the state. And um, in the last three years, we've had over 100 high school students come in directly instead of going the college path, they've come directly to work for us. So uh, while we were doing that, you know, we've implemented uh, apprenticeship programs using uh, CAT simulators. And by doing that, uh, our program started getting recognition, partnering with CAT Sims and, um, and Caterpillar. Uh, you know, we started a curriculum and, and really, as far as we know, it's the first program in the world that that had this this idea of creating this program utilizing simulators. So um, interestingly enough, uh, the uh, legislators in Georgia got a hold of it, uh, came out in, in, uh, to see what we were doing. And together, it wasn't just us, other contractors in the state through the Georgia Highway Contractors Association basically um, uh, approach the legislators and and we had um, a center Lindsay Tippins that kind of ran with the program he was also in the industry and in essence um, there was money allocated to create programs at high schools uh, so each high school put in for a grant and uh, last year was the first time this happened um, 
and they were granted basically funds to um, hire teachers if they don't if they didn't already have them and basically get simulators at the high schools to create uh, basically a very similar program uh, that of uh, similar to what we're doing at CW Matthew. So that took off last year. I mean, just in a short period of time, six high schools put the program in place. And then this year in the next session, uh, legislators once again approved an additional $3 million. Uh, and now this program is going to be in about 14 high schools, high schools across the state of Georgia, where again, they have this program. The teachers are being trained. Um, by really our team, and then they in turn are, are, are training the students. So just a, a, just an amazing program that I really feel is taking off and it's going to change the trajectory of the industry, uh, not only in Georgia, but hopefully other states take this on. Wow. Um, I had like five different questions pop up in my mind and I don't know which uh, which way to start. Okay, so... Um, the original, okay, I'm going to go back, uh, to the first one that popped in my mind. You said a, a hundred, um, high school students ended up, uh, matriculating on to, 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 to working. It was specifically with CW Matthews or just in the industry? No, specifically with CW Matthews. And that was really even before this program. And now that the program's gone, we've gotten a couple from it, but because it just started, there was only a few seniors in the program. I think over the next several years, we're going to see these, you know, freshmen, sophomores, juniors come through the program, and that will be an option. But the hundred was just the effort of of Jeremy and our team getting out to high schools and just talking to the professors and helping them with curriculum and teaching some classes and just really making a connection with the students and not only the students but some of their parents and family. You know. I think at, at first, you know, for years as a parent, uh, myself and other parents, you know, we're just encouraging college, college, college. And, you know, without a doubt, we hire plenty of construction managers and engineers, business majors from college. That's important. But where we're seeing the struggle is at the at the field level, the, the future foreman. So so again, we just uh, targeted some high schools. Uh, partnered with them and, and the hundred or so students that have come directly from high school. That's just with our firm. Now this program with with multiple high schools uh, in connection with other uh, construction uh, companies in the state is is you know gearing up and and like I said started last year now this year so now other construction companies are getting the benefit of bringing these high school students on. But it's just been amazing. We've recently. We already have out of that program that, like I said, just started for us about three to four years ago. We have our first two foremen that came out of the program. So we've got a couple of young men that are in their early 20s, 22, 23, filling the role of a, of a foreman, making, you know, a, a, a fairly decent wage, um, getting vehicles and 401k and managing employees, you know, but um doing an amazing job and like i said we're excited because we see this as uh the future of our industry uh, honestly you know a lot of companies a lot of people talk about hey we have all this workforce that's about to retire and where's all this experience going to come from and without a doubt we have some of that we have definitely plenty of experienced employees that are vital to our success that will be retiring but if anything we have a lot of young workforce now. We have a tremendous amount of foremen under the age of 30. So we're excited about the future. We also have multiple trainers within our company that all they're doing is training out there in the field because our need really has turned more into um, how do we train uh, young uh, men and women that have not been in the industry for very long to succeed. Uh, while at the same time, you know, tackling the issue that, yeah, we do have a retiring workforce, but we're in pretty good shape. So now, of course, our, you know, one of the challenges, I'm not going to say it's all perfect. We have all these people and we don't have employee issues. You know, we still going through that. And then retention is really where our focus is as well, uh, because it's a tough industry. It's long hours, you know, us being based in the, in the Atlanta area. We're in Georgia, but a lot of our work is in Metro uh, Atlanta and all that work is nights and weekends. So 
Of course, that's not for everybody. Once we get them through the door, we still have to uh, keep them, right? So the retention side is something that we're also working on. But um, I, I challenged our team, uh, you know, our foreman and field supervisors this year, and, and I really said, and I mean it, is we don't have a hiring problem. We, we have plenty of people we're hiring. What we need to do is work hard on retaining people. So we are doing some things in that area as well. That's that's amazing. Um, so so the hiring problem. So the 100 or so that that that, that got hired, I, I like I'm, I'm curious in terms of like, what is the what is the 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 volume that is actually needed, like in terms of what you're losing to what needs to be replaced is like 100 a year, like amazing or like 50 percent of what is needed no a hundred a year is is if we could get a hundred a year and, and keep them our our problem would be solved like i said we we are getting our our retention rate uh for these young men and women coming out of high school is much higher than our regular retention rate of somebody okay. that might be coming into the industry you know in their 40s or, or 50s especially if they don't have any experience right so because for a for a 18 year old man or, or, or young lady, you know, the wages are good. The opportunities of advancement are great for the same person that maybe is coming in later on in life. The wage that's, you know, with no experience, the wage might not seem quite as, as, as good for somebody that, you know, has a family now and all that. So kind of that's what's our idea is late. Let's bring people in uh, early on. It's a good wage for them. And then they have plenty of opportunities to grow within the company. So, yeah, uh, I mean, we're doing other programs, not only the the high school, we have a program, it's called H2B2 Visas, where we're bringing some Hispanic employees from Mexico uh, under a program with the government. So this year we actually obtained 50 employees through that program. So we're looking at all a lot of different areas to solve uh, the people. Um, you know, like I said, I hate calling it a problem because it's not a problem. It's just trying to find innovative ways uh, to bring people in. And again, the second and most important part is is to retain. So what I was going to mention about, say, these 100, our retention rate is, is, is much better. But as we were focused on getting more uh, young men and women and working with the high schools and that sort of thing, we lost for a short period of time our focus on staying connected with those first 30, 40, 50, the first ones that started with us have advanced very well, but there for a little while, because we had so much going on, we were starting these programs, we kind of took our eye off the ball, which is you gotta stay, you know, you gotta stay involved with, with these young people. You gotta mentor them. You gotta, you know, be able to coach them, um, c coach them to be, show up on time to, no, you know, to let the foreman know if they're going to be out for a doctor's appointment, some of those kind of things that, you know, it's kind of life coaching skills as well. Uh, so we've kind of refocused, brought a second person in because we really believe in the program. So we're kind of back to the basics. And again, we're seeing great results from that. So, yeah, that is interesting in terms of the, the retention side, because it's like you can get 100 a hundred a a year if you want, but if they're only if, you know, 75 percent of them are, are, are leaving after two or three years, then you're back to square one. Absolutely. And, and there's also a lot of and considering all the training that you're providing there, there's lost investment Absolutely. there for the, for the company. Um, so what are what are what what's what's kind of shown the most success in terms of retention? Well, we have a few things going. One is, again, just them knowing that there's opportunities. So. One of the things we have going is, is what we're calling our apprenticeship program. So what we do is some of these employees that have come in, of course, you know, they, they don't have any equipment uh, experience or anything like that. So they're coming in as laborers. But we started this apprenticeship program, which is a 12-week program, again, in, in, in partnership with Cat Sims and Caterpillar. And, and the employees were coming in one day a week for 12 weeks after work, and we were giving them, uh, coaching them or teaching them how to operate the equipment with our simulators, in-house simulators uh, to become an operator, but again, also uh, providing some leadership skills as well. So kind of just investing in them so they see, hey, there's a future with the company. It's not 
I'm just shoveling and, and, you know, laying pipe and doing all these things, which are important. And we have a lot of people doing, but just kind of seeing, hey, if I put in some effort, then I can, you know, become an operator in a couple of years. And again, we've proven that they go through this 12 week program and then we actually get them out there uh, and do a field test. Uh, they've never touched an excavator or a dozer, but after the 12 weeks, they get out there and yeah, they're not finished operators, but they definitely can load trucks. They can, they can, you know, dig a ditch to lay pipe or whatever the case may be. So they see that we're investing in them. And again, we in, in a few years, we already have two that have made a uh, foreign position, which is a coveted position and, and again, well compensated. So I think them seeing that, hey, there's opportunities for growth is one way to retain them without a doubt. And then we've come up just really with, you know, kind of uh, ideas and ways to to retain people. So not not only for new hires and and those coming out of high school, but again, two years ago, we came up with the idea of coming through COVID. Uh, we saw a lot of companies were, were offering signing bonus and we kind of stopped and, and thought about that and, and, and we're going in that direction and quickly said, hey, let's not do that. You know, if we can just keep the employees we have, again, like I was saying earlier, then we, we don't really have a hiring problem. We have a retention issue that we got to deal with. So we came out in, in, in with this idea of, of, we call it the million dollar construction bonus. So all of our hourly personnel, we took a million dollars and we counted their hours of work during the construction season, April 1st to November. And then we just split the million dollars between all of them. So not we already kept all the, the year end bonus in place for them, the vacations and all those things. But it was another way to tell them, hey, hang with us. You know, thank you for the effort, for the hard work you do uh, each day. And we've done that as well. So getting some fruits from from that initiative. Um, more than anything, I mean, I think, you know, in any industry, I think, you know, obviously people are going to get opportunities and leave for money. Uh, our focus is really more in our core values. Uh, one of them being we care for others. And I continuously stress to our supervisors, yeah, we will have a few people leave for money. Uh, but I think a lot of people, the reason they leave is because they, they don't feel cared for. Uh, their immediate supervisor plays such a huge role. So that's kind of our focus when we talk to our supervisors. And honestly, I, I'm, uh, I keep track of that. We, we track um, retention by foreman and by supervisor because we want to know, uh, <laughs> is there somebody out there that, that's struggling with keeping people? Maybe they need some additional coaching or leadership uh, training. So yeah. Um, we, we're very focused on making sure we just don't take it for granted. When somebody leaves, we want to dig into what is the reason they're leaving, you know, and, and this industry is not for everybody. We understand that. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we're doing everything we can so that people feel like, Hey, this is a good place to work. Uh, uh, we're, we're a lot about family values, uh, in the company. And, and even though we're large, we wanted to feel like family. So, we're not perfect. We make plenty of mistakes, but we really do try to focus on being engaged with our employees because I really do feel like that's the reason why they stay or why they go. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, and it's really no different than any other profession or, in, or, or industry, right? They just want to feel like you're part of something, right? Absolutely. And not, not just a, not just a hired hand. Um, and that you're, 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 you're valued. Um, and, and, and yeah, like you said, you feel, you feel part of it. So, um, so interestingly enough, uh, I had mentioned that we've had other episodes that have kind of breached this conversation. Um, what, one of them being with Aaron Witt from, from build yeah. And, uh, I know that you are participating in, uh, the inaugural dirt world summit. That's going to be, uh, in October. Uh, this year in Houston. So tell us a bit more about that event. I guess we're, 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 we're helping Aaron out with a little bit of a, a promotion yeah. here, but tell us about the event and, and what you're going to be doing there. Sure. So, I mean, it, it, it sounds like a great event. I, I'm so excited about it. How I made the cut of speakers. I have no idea because they have some amazing speakers, but 
yeah, we connected with Aaron, uh, you know, last year. And, and honestly, uh, him and his team are just amazing. You know, the following they have, the, the kind of just really their mission to make the dirt world a better place. It's just he has an amazing team. And, and through that, like I said, I think uh, he's seen our efforts um, on the people's side. So really the, uh, the, the event is, is about leadership. It's about workforce development. It's about things that we just talked about, how to retain people, best practices throughout many of the uh, of the construction companies that, that are his clients and, and possibly some that are not even his clients. But I, I really feel like, uh, you know, Dan, uh, who's the president there, and Aaron ha have this vision of really making this industry uh, exciting and just really highlighting it for the world to see. Obviously, they have a huge following. But but yeah, you know, so I, I, we're encouraging everybody that's associated with the industry to attend for, for best practices, really to share ideas. I, I know a few through Aaron. He's a great people connector. So I've met some of the people in these other companies that are going to be there. And um, we all have the same goal and mission, right? Just it, it it's easy. It would be easier to just kind of keep all your secrets to yourself and what you're doing and those sort of things. But the reality, for example, this this initiative in Georgia that I'm explaining uh, with the high schools, you know, if, if when I, I was going to say if that succeeds, but it, I really feel it will is when that succeeds, we're not going to be able to hire every high school student that's going through that program. It's really an industry thing. And if the industry can get stronger, each company is going to get stronger and that's kind of the idea of this summit is it's just to highlight ideas, uh, look at what others are doing. And of course, they got some amazing speakers that are more on the leadership side. So I definitely encourage anybody listening to sign up, uh, go see what it's about. And uh, again, I think it's just going to be fun and exciting. This industry, as you well know, is just filled with great and amazing people uh, oh, yeah. that, that just... Uh, you know, are, are, are wanting to make a, a difference. And that's really why I want to be part of it. I kind of want to share our story, but more than anything, encourage people because a lot of times people say, well, Dan, you know, y'all are large and you have 1500 employees and you, you can have these people and these, and these recruiters and these trainers. But really I'm a firm believer that this can happen in a small company too. It might be somebody that's got to wear a couple of different hats, uh, but you know, it's not about the size or how many people you can have. But I, I kind of see it as if you're not investing in this, then you're really going to be left behind and, 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 and continue to talk for years and years about the people issue instead of doing something about it. Yep. Oh, I love it. So um, we're at our, our hot take segment of, of the show. Uh, and this is like perfectly in line with what we're talking about. So, uh, there's a, a founder and CEO of a construction firm, um, that either has, or will soon publish a children's book. So you talked about going into the high schools and even the elementary, we touched on that at the, at the beginning. So the children's book is going to be titled, uh, grit leads to greatness. Uh, which I believe is actually the, the tagline for the for the company that the author um, uh, uh, either own, uh, owns or is the CEO. Uh, so it's a 40 page picture book uh, aimed at changing the perception of our industry. So so just kind of looking for your thoughts on it. Are you excited for an, a grassroots effort like that? Do you think these can actually make a difference? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and I kind of. I, I was puzzled. I was having this conversation the other day with my nephew, who's who's just a few years younger than I am, and he has a young child. And, you know, you got this whole idea when you're young, you got the and I see it now. I don't my kids are older now, but I see they still have these shows on excavators and all that and Legos. And we do a great job early on to highlight the industry. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what in the world happens between, you know, first or second grade and then the end of high school. It's kind of like we lost a focus. But we got to regain that. And, you know, this is a prime example. I mean, how need to have a book like that? Um, we can be seen as a plan B or as a last alternative. It, it, it is exciting, right? When you see those young kids, you know, climbing up in the equipment, we do events when they, when they're, you know, Jeremy that works for us, he's created, when we go to these, um, these schools, he's got these remote control, uh, you know, trucks and excavators and all those kind of things. And I mean, 
the kids just, you know, focus and fly into our display. They're having such a great time. When they get on on the simulators, I mean, it blows their mind, really. You got the uh, the goggles on and all that, and you get the sense that you're out there, and, and it is exciting. But if you would, if you could just witness some of these schools that he goes to, I mean, he's got what he calls tape wars, and he's got uh, you know Star Wars stuff or Avenger stuff. You got to connect with these young people and meet them where they are. So. Um, I, I'm excited about the future. I think, like I said, that elementary and really middle school, I think in middle school is when, you know, young people are forming their ideas of what they want to be or what they want to do. And, um, you know, being involved at that level, um, I think is so important. So to hear somebody's doing, for example, this book, um, it's, it's just great. That's what we need to do. Like I said, when I see Jeremy and you should see these videos, I mean, he's like, you know, these kids are going crazy in the schools and they're kind of doing all kinds of fun events. And, you know, other industries have done a good job of doing that. We haven't so much, but I hear about it a lot more. Now I think a lot of people are buying in and, uh, and again, seeing this as a viable career, like it was back in the, you know, forties, fifties and sixties. I mean, that there was a lot of people getting into this business. There's a lot of successful stories about, entrepreneurs that got in these businesses or that started these businesses like Mr. Bob Matthews that owns our company. You know, his dad started back in the 40s and, you know, they've grown the business into a very successful company and we just love to see these young people. Uh, I, kind of the point I constantly leave with our folks is at the end of the day, when you go to retire, it's like nobody's really going to remember what projects you built. You know, they might remember one or two. What they're going to remember is kind of the legacy that you left, who did you mentor behind you? And kind of this is the idea of, of this this initiative is, you know, we build roads and bridges, but just building good young men and young women is what's gonna keep this industry alive for many years to come. Yeah, and you um, you brought up a really good point that there's a gap, right? We, we Where, like you said, there's the high school program and high school is, you know, it's oriented in trying to like figure out what's your path after after high school. So at least there is a a, a kind of a train of thought there. And it, there it's easier for us to go in and interject like, hey, don't forget about this path. Right. But you've got honestly probably yeah, elementary and middle school first through eighth grade is like this gap because prior to that you got you got the Bob the Builders exactly. and you got the, the touch a truck uh, uh, events that are happening and kids are all when they're super young are, are in that. But first through eighth grade, there's this gap of of uh, of yeah of of knowledge and of of bringing them uh, bringing them along. Wow. I know we 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 were in um, Washington D.C. for the uh, national celebration of construction on the on the National Mall, and I mean they had all of the, I mean, it was just, it was basically like a touch a truck uh, on the National Mall. And it was a lot, it, it was multi-purpose. One was being able to get in front of the lawmakers to try to, you know, to to, to increase the amount of funding that's going towards construction and, and, and really to kind of proliferate that side of it. But the other side was around the kids because we, like we had uh, Trimble we, uh, at our our little trailer set setup that we had, we had spot from Boston dynamics, the dog, the robot dog. Awesome. Um, and we just had him kind of, you know, go, going around. I mean, the kids were going crazy. That's over awesome. this. I've seen and, video of that. I, I mean, the kids are going crazy. Heck, I get all excited when I see oh, yeah. stuff like don't, that. Don't get me wrong. The adults were going crazy for it as well. Um, but it, yeah, and the adults were like, then they would be like, well, how is that utilized in construction? And we talk about well, like how, sure. how that was utilized, but just to get the kids to kind of, <laughs> so I, in a, in a previous life, I was a soccer coach uh, full, full time. And, and we had programming at a, at, at the really young ages, right? Three and four year olds, five and six year olds and, and whatnot. And, and it was, I, 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 I kind of like tongue in cheek said, I'm like, it's like, you know, the soccer programming at that age is is kind of just brainwashing it's it's fun around a soccer ball sure. like you're is there therefore you kind of relate in your mind i like soccer because i had fun at a young age of that right. so it's the same idea that we need to create like 
I have fun around construction and it brainwashes a little bit to get into to get into that. That's a great example, right? I mean, in you know, we got to we got to find a way to stay in touch with them the entire the entire uh, school age time it, because that's really when the ideas are being formed. So I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Is how do we continue to focus on on the excitement of it, the opportunities? Like I said, I mean, it's just um, you know, there's immense opportunities in the future. We see all these different programs, the funding that, you know, is coming in our industry and the need uh, for them. And again, it's, it's from a, from a uh, field personnel. I was with a peer group just last week and they were talking about it in their end uh, because they were a union company that their skill labor and, and field force wasn't as big of a problem, but they really had the prob problem at the management level. So how to get people excited, but it, it definitely starts at a young age, educating, you know, in schools, but also really, again, going back to the idea, educating parents that this is a great industry and that you can have a, an amazing career, um, both, you know, financially and professionally in our industry. Well, awesome. Th thank you so much for, for joining us today on the show. This has been a fun conversation. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's been like, you know, really it's been, a, it's been about technology, but also about the, the innovation around, uh, protecting our workforce, uh, Absolutely. from, 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 from soup to nuts. So I, I love it. I really appreciate all of the experiences that you shared with us today. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you and Trimble. You know, you're a great partner and, uh, just look forward to, to seeing you uh and in, in connecting maybe in, in one of these events and uh, again i just encourage anybody listen to ch check out the summit in houston uh dirt world summit in uh, late Morning, october awesome you know and uh for all of you listening today thank you so much for joining uh for joining us on until next time stay connected Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Connected Construction Show. For more information, visit us at connectedconstructionshow.com.